Hello everyone, my name is Steven Zapata. I'm a concept artist, illustrator, online art teacher, and former instructor at Art Center College of Design. I would like to introduce you to my new drawing course, Form from Imagination, a course designed to help you draw with confidence from your mind. Maybe you wanna be a professional illustrator or designer. Maybe you wanna be a master with a pencil. Or maybe you just wanna be the best artist that you can be. Beautiful goals. But it's not always clear how to improve the work that you do from imagination. Over the past six months, I've taken all of the little eurekas, tips, and essential exercises that gave me confidence drawing from my mind and compiled them into a sequential course. We start with the absolute foundations, covering the scientific nature of light and shadow, how to hatch, how to create flat tones, how to render spheres and cubes. And step by step, we move through combined shapes, complex shapes, organic shapes. We cover how to simplify extremely complex subjects like the head into basic shapes so that you can handle them more easily from your head. We look at how to understand and treat details. And by the end of these 14 chapters with over 50 video lessons, you'll be ready to do complex designs from your mind with fidelity and energy. And all the demos are done in pencil on paper, so you can do all of the assignments even if you don't have a fancy digital art setup. But I also have demos, instructions, and modifications to the assignments for those who do wanna do them digitally. Here's how it works. Go to formfromimagination.com and sign up for the course. Download the assignment book and start watching the lectures. Do the assignments at your own pace. Take your time with them and use this self-study to develop your patience. When you're done, post your assignments in the exclusive community hub, and I'll personally critique your work with drawovers, diagrams, and advice. I want you to know, this course is no joke just because it's online. It is challenging content, and it is more complete than it would be if I was teaching this class at an art college as I have before. If I was teaching this class in person at Art Center today, I would just play these videos in class, knowing full well that they're the most concise, focused, edited, step-by-step -step way to convey the material. So I'm serious when I say, this course isn't just a substitute for a college-level course, it's better than a college-level course. And you don't have to pay thousands of dollars per credit and wind up hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt. So thank you for checking out the course. Thank you for watching this and for your support. And thank you for drawing and making your artwork. The world needs it. I'll see you soon. I'm just ready to go now. I'm ready to go now. Oh, wait, no, that's not what I want to do. There we go. Uh-oh, my camera settings are all off. Because I opened the window. Give me a second here, folks. Calm down. Everybody just, just cool it. Just for a second. We'll see, maybe we'll open the window later. Hello, greetings. Yes, yes. Hello to Estras Munoz, Daryl Grant, Cassie Norwood, Vera Thel, Lloyd Gugis, Robert Licha, Saman Kucher, Stefan Gobert, Gemmel. Gabriel Went, Estras Munoz, 
and Chady on fire. I couldn't wait. I had to blow through the, uh, I just had to blow through the, the timer. Sometimes it's just go time and there's nothing else to be said about it. It's simply go time. Let me check my audio levels here. Hello, I'm speaking at a normal volume. My name is Steven. Hello, I'm speaking at a louder volume. My name is Steven. And now I'm singing in a cringe way that makes people stop watching. Lower the viewers, people bailing out immediately. All right, audio levels look okay. I got my tea. I got my sketchbook. I've clearly warmed up my world-class voice. It obviously sounds perfectly refined. How's everybody doing? Hope everybody's having a good week. Sorry that I haven't been around. Crazy week. Tax week here in the United States. Knocked out the beginning of the week and then second half of the week pretty nuts with some stuff I hopefully be able to talk to you guys about soon. And then I wasn't going to stream today either. I was planning on just taking the whole week off from streaming, but um, my wife got a, woke up with a cold this morning and we always catch each other's sickness. So when I saw that, I was like, shit. If I, if, I, if I take the realistic look at it, I'll probably catch what she's got in the next couple days, and then that could mess up coming back to streaming Monday, Tuesday. So thinking ahead, I was like, I better sneak in a stream today. Better do it. Thanks God, Stiavano is back, says Lalokin. Your singing will only increase the viewer count, sadly. I know you guys can't, can't reinforce that kind of behavior. You guys need to stop reinforcing my nine-year-old girl singing Ave Maria at a funeral energy. I can't be rewarded for stuff like that. We're warming up in the sketchbook. Well, who knows? You, you guys know I'm pretty free-flowing. Maybe we'll just stay in the sketchbook. But my plan right now is to warm up in the sketchbook and then jump over and poke a little bit at a couple drawings that I have in progress. Let's see, what is it? Which... Let me fix my camera here. Does that look more like what's actually my sketchbook or does the other setting? That looks pretty much like it. It's very light right now. Eh, I don't like it. It always gets a little blown out. Just keep it a little keep it a little vaguer. Now draw it giving birth, says Tommy Han. Tommy Han wants, wants natal stuff, obsessed with natal stuff, clearly. Well, Tommy Han, I don't know if I can help you with that. I don't know if I can help you get the natal drawings that you want. I guess I'm just not big into drawing beings giving birth. I'd never thought about it before, though. It'd be a pretty good angle. Pretty good angle. Probably get famous off stuff like that. Nick Ravioli says, I was about to go out and live a normal life with socializing and meeting people, but then this stream came on, and <laughs> I was like, Stephen is more important. Anyway, don't do that, Nick. For the love of God, wherever you were going to go meet people, go do that instead. Go do that instead. Please, you'd make me so happy if you lived a normal life. rather than watching me draw aliens. Watching me draw aliens and singing horrible, cover, singing horrible covers of songs, off-key covers of songs. A woman's love is stronger than the man's. It can hold your heart in the palm of its hands it's the blade of a knife a woman's love a woman's love that gives you life it can lift you high 
or sink you like a stone. Anybody says about it, there's no life for you without it now. Immediately unsubscribing, says Tommy Hand. It's just, I ain't got what you need. I ain't got what you need, Tommy. We all know what you need, Tommy. Nobody here judging you. We know what you need. You need those natal drawings. You need detailed, vivid, visual descriptions of creatures, people, ideas, concepts, metaphysical beings giving birth, graphic, the full anatomical facts of the situation. You just got to go get it however you need. But it ain't going to be around here. What voice is that? You think I know what voice that is? It's like vaguely cowboy, but not at all southern or Texan. It just makes no sense. Adam Duff is out of here. He's unsubbing. How you doing, Adam? Adam says, hey, Stephen, I only have a second to chime in, but I wanted to thank you for your videos. They've been hugely valuable to me as your drawings are humbling and beautiful. Adam, I only have the same thing to say back to you, man. Very thankful for your videos as well. I think it's wonderful that we can sort of help each other out, you know? Even, even people like you and I who spend a lot of time sort of giving art advice, um, we still need to hear it from others a lot of the time. Um, Adam, I know you've only got a second, but I bet you've experienced this too, that like when you say it to the students, like when you tell people, um, all this stuff about like how to relax, how to draw what makes you happy, uh, it reminds you that that's the case too. And you sort of feel better after you stream or teach or talk to a student, you sort of align yourself in the process as well. And when you're done helping the student, you're like, oh yeah, that's right, I gotta calm down. I, I just gotta keep going and keep drawing. Adam says, I'm awesome, been hinging on your work, and a huge thank you. Thank you, Adam. That means a lot. Happy to help however I can. Art's one of those nice things where you can kind of help others by uh, just drawing. <laughs> That's pretty rare. There's not that many things like that. We can sort of extend to each other a spiritual buoy just by continuing to make some work. It doesn't even have to be our best. It doesn't have to be the absolute top of the mountain. You can help someone out if you just show up that day and you're like, all right, let's be a little creative. Goodbye, Adam. Good luck with your class. Take care, brother. Daryl Grant says, I think art and writing have that in common. Yeah, that makes sense for writing too. Mel, how are you, man? Steven, thank you for, your, for the help you provided me. You're great. Love your horse subplot, by the way. <laughs> Yeah, I've definitely been drawing a lot of them. Um, I've been iterating on the horse concept. I've got a, I've got a horse stuck in my brain. My, my mind is for some reason trying to produce a horse image and I've been turning it around. I've got that sketch over there on the other side of the sketchbook. That was on the mind because of a drawing that we might push a little bit on later, which is... Uh, Thank you. 
this one, this one, which we started on stream. Oof. Uh, I don't want to zoom out completely right now because I'd have to redo my focus, but you could see it. We did this one a couple streams ago. This is the beginning of my horse arc, my temporary horse arc. We'll probably work on that one a little bit later. And uh, I did have a, I start, I did a little digital iteration on that, though that's kind of mixed up with a, a full story composition for one of my stories, but I'll flash it at you guys just because, you know, you guys are cool. You guys are my buds. Let me show you. I'll open Photoshop real quick. Estra says, do horses go or nya nya nya? Now watch me whip. Now watch me nya nya. I'm looking for April 19th horse. Yeah, this is the one. This, I did this sketch back on Wednesday. It has a lot of other stuff going on in it, but it does have a further iteration on the horse arc, my horse subplot, and Photoshop's crashing. Fantastic. Do, 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 for yeah. Photoshop crashing, go on, baby, go on, go on and crash, who needs ya, yeah, spinning wheel of death, there we go, we came out on top today, yeah, horse subplot definitely going on here, very similar to the one that's in the sketchbook, same kind of face transformations and stuff going on, but a bit more explicit with the rider, a bit of the accompaniers and more of a full scene thing going on. Might be something there. Sketches, all sketches. Just iterating on ideas. All right, back to this. Let me make sure my preview is off over here on YouTube so we don't lose frames. Hey, how are you, Tuco? Who's calling me Tuco? You think I'm Tuco, man? I ain't no Tuco, dog. Look at that guy that has the hand on his head. There he is. Course DLC when, says Mel. I got plans. I got plans. Looks like we're warming up with a pretty straightforward face here. Steven, is there a concrete screaming schedule or is it just whenever you feel like it? It's whenever I feel like it, baby. I have a, no, there's no concrete one. There's a soft one, which is uh, Monday, Wednesday, Thursdays. Monday, Wednesday, Thursdays. One eye's a little higher than the other there, but that's all right. This thing's gonna get weird somehow, so asymmetrical eyes are gonna be the least of his problems. The very least. Daleb says, sup, nothing much, nothing much. I'm currently watching someone on the bus staring with a powerful animalistic lust at a plushie of a Koopa from Mario that they are currently holding in their hand. I thought you would want to know. I did want to know, Tommy Han. I did want to know. Now that I know, I feel relieved. I mean, I don't know if you guys get this, but 
if I haven't heard about somebody staring at Koopa plushies with lust in like a few days, I start to experience like a deep existential dread. Like I can't really put a name to it, but I just get this feeling of like, I don't know what's out there, you know? I don't know what's going on. And that really starts to worry me and it keeps me up at night. It just reminds me that we're all sort of moving through this closed bubble and that there's no way to know reality. And that even our own natures in which we are embodied and through which we manifest in the world are in some deep sense unknown to us. There's a sort of current ethos that we are how the universe comes to know itself. And the more and more that I think about it, it's more like we're how the universe comes to unknow itself. The universe already knows itself perfectly. Its natural laws and orders are perfectly writ across the very stuff of reality. The bones of the world, rocks, trees, the air itself, it all operates perfectly. There are no questions for it. It is an answer in and of to itself to a question never asked. It is we who unknow it, who manifest confusion, who create a void of meaning. What the fuck? Anyway. So it really, you know, helped me out a lot that you told me about the staring at the plushie of a Koopa with lust. That really kind of abates all of that. I almost bought the Resident Evil 4 remake the other day. Almost. I just couldn't bring myself to pull the trigger. I was like, how many times am I going to pay for this game? Because I just bought the VR version two, like two years ago or a year ago. It's like, I'm going to, it's only been a year. I'm going to pay for it again. I'm going to pay for this game again. Drink water says, I think I have given in to be a freak artist. Finally bought my first skull model. I will get a Tyrannosaurus next. Look, having a skull model does not, does not make you a freak. That's some normal stuff. Maybe once you get the T-Rex, then it's getting a little freaky. I've got quite a few models strewn about the house though. I might get a horse next. Doing three sketches that have a horse in them has uh, already justified to me buying an anatomical model of a horse. In the cold, dark night, you need a woman's love, a woman's love to give you life. Stream RE4? No way. I can't find out that more people would watch that and it'll ruin my life. I need to keep myself disciplined, working hard, keeping the grit high.
I've lost all the texture on my graphics tablet, even on the extra texture sheet. Wondering, do you guys have any suggestions? What should I use on it now? If you're using a regular graphics tablet, one that doesn't have a screen, you can just, um, they're sensitive to pressure even above the actual surface because the pressure sensitivity is in the pen, not in the surface. So you can actually just tape a piece of paper to the top and draw on it like normal. The tablet part uh, only registers the position of the pen. And if you use one of the, I mean, basically all of them are like this at this point, but they just use magnetic resonance that has hover capabilities, like a couple millimeters above the surface of the tablet. Putting a piece of paper over it won't mess with it knowing where the pen is hovering. So yeah, you can just tape any paper that you like that has the right texture, grit, or tooth that you would want, and you can just draw on that. And when you wear a hole in that, you can just tape another one on there. I did that for a little bit, but uh, I quickly realized that I actually prefer, when doing digital, I don't wanna like play pretend that I'm getting a traditional feeling. I actually prefer the glassy feeling, the perfect plastic feeling, so. I actually liked my tablets better once they sort of glass out and become perfectly smooth. Steven, what kind of music do you listen to? I genuinely can't tell. Uh, I listen to all sorts of stuff. I don't have like a preferred genre or anything, I would say. I'm not really a, I mean, I love, I like music like anybody else. I just don't, I'm not like a music deep dive kind of a guy or anything like that. I don't like go hunting new music or stuff like that. You know, I listen to the new stuff that artists that I already know put out. If I hear something in a movie or a TV show, I'll go check it out. I spend a lot of time drawing to uh, pop music. That includes like rap and hip hop and stuff like that. No music? Not today. Not yet, at least. I'm not really feeling it today. Music doesn't always really please me. Uh, do I have another HB? Hopefully I do in here. Hey Steven, have you listened to The Who? It's Mongolian heavy metal. I have not. Sounds interesting though. Apologies, just prepare yourself. I'm gonna sharpen some pencils. You're gonna hear some rattling. Just be ready. It's not a big deal. I just don't wanna surprise you. You know what I'm saying? I gotta have another HB in here, come on. 6B, 14B, 39B, 64B. I don't know how many pencils in here. I feel you on the no music. Yeah, sometimes I just find it distracting, especially on stream, because uh, I can always just fill the, I'm kind of filling the void with talking to chat and stuff like that. I don't really feel like I need the music.
Ascending Storm says, I have arrived. I hope you missed me, Stephen. <laughs> Keep hoping. It takes more than that to summon my missing. Every time you stream, it is a mandatory task to ask, how's, how's the dog? She's all right. She's all right. She was a little troubled the other day because, uh, look, she's highly athletic. That's what you got to understand. On the fetch field, dominant athletic performance. And she's just unafraid of pain. You know, she's all about pushing. And um, she took a dive for the ball, and she scraped her little chin. Got a big cut down here. And I actually had to notice it. She's, she's got, like, some dark fur under there. But uh, I noticed it a few days later once the scab had formed, and she was trying to lick it all day. So all day she's just sitting around going, trying to get her tongue to wrap under her, under her chin and get to the scab that was itching her. Classic dog stuff. I was about to say, how come there's no songs about dogs? But then I remembered that there's a, that Led Zeppelin song that's about do a dog, right? What is it? The, uh, the brawn your hour stomp or something like that? Whoa, caught you smiling at me. That's the way it should be. Like a leaf is to a tree so fine. Who let the dogs out? You're right. That is a famous song that's definitely about dogs. Stratovolcano says, hello, Stephen. Hello, Stratovolcano. Stephen, what's going on on Antarctica? You probably know. <laughs> is Antarctica a uh, thing? I don't know what Antarctica is. I'm assuming that's not, you don't actually mean Antarctica, like the continent. Because it's pretty obvious what's going on on the actual continent. Ghosts of dead explorers, what else would be going on?
Your pencil is moving so fast it looks like it's sped up. It is not. I'm just moving it back and forth. Not all that quickly either. Near, far, wherever you Well, don't come in here just to tell me I can't sing Celine Dion. <coughs> coming in hot. Are you coming in to do a meeting? No. Oh. I'm just coming in. You're just trying to, you're just coming in to hang out. Quick gear question. Do you have to use a capture card with your camera to stream or just an HDMI cord? I'm using a you do need to put it into something. So I have an HDMI that goes out of my camera and goes into an Elgato, um, I forget what the, it's the U, it's an HDMI to USB dongle that Elgato makes. Uh, I think it's called the 4K30. So dark in the D. It might actually be better. I don't know if um, it would a game capture card um, take an HDMI out from a SLR camera. I'm sure there'd be some way to do that. I'm not 100% sure, but um, that actually might be better because then the capture card processes the image for you, so you get less lag. Like, I get considerable lag. Uh, with this setup because the Elgato doesn't process the image my computer has to so it's always behind the other stuff like my face cam So I have to actually put delay on my face cam and my microphone, but uh, I just use an iMac for my computer So I can't put a capture card into my iMac But if you have a PC that might be a better option I just don't know for a hundred percent that you can do that some more tech savvy person in the chat probably knows Chris Maycock says, don't stop there, Stephen. You have an amazing voice. You hear that, Deirdre? They want me to spend all stream singing Celine Dion, singing My Heart Will Go On. They don't even care about the drawings. Near, far, wherever you are. Uh, what, the, what are the fucking words to that? Do you know the words to that? I think they are. And then the next verse is like, we're on a boat, on a big fucking boat, the biggest boat, and there's an iceberg, and we're kissing, now we're fucking. I think that's it. I'm pretty sure those are the words that Celine Dion Wrote for that. Well, she, she probably had a writer. You know, she's just a performer. It was probably like, who's the guy who writes all the musicals? Soderbergh. He probably wrote the lyrics.
I don't know if I want this guy to have lips. I hate lips. I'm anti-lips on all characters and drawings. There's just something so disappointingly pedestrian about lips, you know? She's like, oh yeah, I guess that means he has to talk and eat. It's like, what if he's a being that doesn't have to talk and eat? No lips, then. Goodbye, Mr. Gan Wong, who says you sing with the eyebrows, too. I mean, there's no controlling it. Hey, Stephen, I have a question about the mindset of a sketcher. I've heard you talk about the mindset of someone who sketches so much but is not able to finish a piece. Got any tips on what matters? Well, in an ultimate sense, it, you don't need to be anything, right, in art. You can be someone who just sketches and you can be someone who just finishes stuff. Um, it's really like, it, it just comes down to what you want. With, well, forget what you want, it's knowing what you want. That's the hard part. But um, any one of them is valid. I mean, geez, there's been plenty of amazing artists that their whole career was they painted or rendered other people's drawings. Someone else did the layout and then another person did the actual finish. Um, and nobody gives a, di no one says they're lesser artists or something like that. Um, it's just a specialization and it fits into a pipeline. Um, so in an ultimate sense, you don't need to be one or the other. You can do whatever you want. But um, if you want to be more balanced or if you just don't feel like you're at a point now where you know with confidence that you are one or the other, I would say it is important especially for like skill building, I think it's very important to do involved finished drawings. Uh, I think that that teaches you a lot, that you really, it teaches you a lot that a lot of people are missing and there's really no other way to get it. Um, and I feel like people just sketch more naturally just because it's lower commitment, it's easier, it tends to be the fun part of a drawing for most people who are starting out. Um, there, there's some people who temperamentally, they're just inclined to enjoy finishing more than sketching even early on. But by my estimations, it's got to be less. I mean, there's just statistically fewer people who are like that. So I, I would advise most people to really take earnestly the benefits of buckling down regularly and doing more involved drawings because a uh, there is a huge pool of skills hidden behind that time wall that people very often miss for years and years. I got my heart will go on stuck in my poor wife's head now. She's humming it back there. I'm sorry, Deirdre. I might have to put some music on just because uh, if I don't, now I'm just going to be filling the dead air with my heart will go on because <laughs> now it's stuck in my head too. I didn't want to play music today, but I might need to to prevent me from just mindlessly humming it and singing it. Now we've really got ourselves in a problem.
Hello, I can't. Mihail Simeonov says, Hello, art people. Wish you all happy drawing and great weekend. We wish you happy drawing and a great weekend as well. Mihail Simeonov. Stratovolcano says, Stephen, your art has this crazy elegance to it. It's so interesting. Well, the fact that you can notice it just means that you have exceptional taste, Stratovolcano. I mean, you should be very proud of yourself. I mean, a lot of people are so ignorant and uneducated that they look at my drawings and they don't even realize they're the best in the world. And that's, I feel very bad for those people. And it's unfortunate that, you know, they just don't, they're, they're just not Guggenheim enough, you know? They're not high fructose enough. They're not art net enough. They're not Pace Gallery enough. They're not Gagosian Gallery enough. And that's sad. That's sad in an existential capacity. But, uh, you know, just, you know, speaking between you and I, people on our level, you know, our level of intellectual pretensions and elitism, um, we sort of create this comfortable space where you and I both know, winkingly, how overeducated we are. And um, we can just sort of swap PhDs and stuff like that. And that always makes me feel just very comfortable. You know, like, I don't have to sort of dumb myself down for uh, the usual person who comes across my work, who doesn't recognize it for its undeniable excellence. So just, I really appreciate you opening up that safe space for me. Thank you. Thank you. I think um, Artnet is a little too lowbrow to work in that show. Oh, God damn it, Deirdre. I don't know if you guys can, I don't know if you guys can hear my wife, but she just said, I think Artnet is a little too lowbrow to work in that joke, which is, yeah, typical from Miss Studio Art Degree from NYU. God damn it. Why you always got to flex that on me, man? That's Mrs. Studio Art Degree. That's Mrs. Studio Art Degree to you. God damn it. The shit I have to put up with. She's always coming over my shoulder and going, huh, another goblin, eh? I'm like, yeah. She's like, mm-hmm. Pace Gallery and Gagosian totally worked though, right? Yeah. I'm clear on that? All right, good. <laughs> I got the sign off on that. Gottlieb says, hey, Stephen, I realize lately that the courage and peace you've helped me find in my art making have been critical to my practice and improvement. Just wanted to say thanks. It is an honor to have intersected with you in your practice in the capacity that I have. I consider it very lucky that I said the right thing at the right time to produce a little bit of improvement in your practice, just a little bit more peace. I'm very happy for you. Keep drawing, baby. Keep drawing. Emilio Quezada Torres says, why you don't go to work in Pixar or studio animation like this one, like DreamWorks or something? Can you imagine if Pixar made a movie that looked like my art? <laughs> That'd be fucked up. <laughs> That'd be fucked up. Imagine if you imagine if you saw a Pixar poster and like something like this was the poster for a Pixar movie. <laughs> People would freak out. <laughs> Nobody would go see that.
<laughs> Can't wait for Toy Story 7. Parents would be confused. I would pay to see this movie. Yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong. If they actually did it, it'd be awesome. But they're not going to do it. If you guys want to petition Pixar to make a movie out of my work, you go right ahead. Soundtrack has to be Celine Dion, though. It's Celine Dion or bust. I don't want any goddamn trendy pop stars doing the lead song. Celine Dion only. All right, maybe Ariana Grande. Maybe. Embarrassing old art stream when? There ain't no embarrassing old art. It's all impressive. Dude, the love for Red Diamond, man. What can I say? I just, I craft world-class characters. It just happens naturally for me, you know? I just naturally exhale genre-defining IP. I don't know how else to put it. I don't even know, you know, to my fancy Hollywood agent, I don't know what to say. I'm just like, how do we put it? And I'm like, just tell them that I exhale genre-defining IP. I don't know what else to say. All right? I really don't know what else to say. My agent is constantly like, dude, the big Hollywood movie executives, they're right there. They're ready to sign the contract, and then they keep getting distracted because they hear you're singing. And then they're like, hold on, hold on. I'm also one of the CEOs of this big record label, and now I'm trying to sign them. And then they're trying to sign me on the record deal, and then they get distracted. They're like, whoa, 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 what the fuck is Red Diamond, man? I'm getting pulled into the lore. This is world-class IP, genre-defining IP. And it's just, they get stuck in this endless loop where no one can sign the deal because they're so impressed by the incredible depth of my mastery and its breadth. What am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to say? How do I stop this? I can't. I want my sleep paralysis demon to be Red Diamond Man. <clears throat> that is genuinely a scary concept. I don't wish that on you. I mean, if that's really what you want, I hope you get it, but it sounds a little scary.
He sings Ave Maria gently, as if he was kissing me with his song. Killing me softly with his words. With his words, telling my whole life. With his words, killing me. With his song. Any song can become witchy ovulations if you try hard enough. Also, any song can be sung in Dracula voice, that's for sure. Yes. You might think I'm crazy, the way I've been craving. But to put it quite plainly, just give me those babies. Ah, 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 ah. Better to say doing me, right? Ah, 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 ah. What are you doing tonight? That's some, you trying to send me coded messages? Sean Harrell says, do you think you have to go to school to be an artist? No, you don't. I think most artists will need to engage a community somehow, but there's all sorts of ways to do that. Sorry, who's messaging here now? Who's all this? Oh, that's not for me. Okay. Colin Gallagher says, hey, Stephen, how are you? Looks great so far. Thank you so much. I'm good. I'm good. I come in and you're saying, just give me those babies in a Dracula voice. Look, man, I mean, it's just, that's what this stream has become at this point. <laughs> this used to be an art stream. Now it's just a proving that any song can be sung in Dracula voice stream. That's my great work. This is what I need to put effort into for the rest of my life. On the road again I can't wait to get on the road again The thing I love is making music with my friends And I can't wait to get on the road again How do you balance a 9 to 5 while having an art practice? I am the wrong guy to ask for that I have not done much of that balance A very lucky situation for me Though I have gone long periods where I tried to balance, um, where I tried to balance continuing to do personal artwork while doing commercial artwork nine to five, and that has its own unique challenges because, uh, you know, while you're doing a job that's not art related and you're sort of dreaming of doing your art, um, well, it does just that. It makes you dream. You're sort of like building up this this furious energy like fuck this i hate this job i want to get home and make art but it's like you don't really have that when you're doing art as the job you know but by, by the time you're done doing it for eight hours and then you sit down after dinner and you're like all right now i gotta make more art it's really easy to just be like completely burnt out on art making and want to do anything else 
And um, I did do that for a long time, and I don't have much in the way of advice, really. I mean, it's hard, and you just need to sort of, if it's what you really want and you've got things that you want out of it, you just need to acknowledge that it's going to involve some pain and do it anyway. One thing that did work for me is that, um, like I just said, it was too exhausting to do it after work. So I started, I reversed the schedule and I started waking up extra early and I gave the best of me to my art uh, first thing in the morning. So I would, I, I just decided that was more important to me on a broader level. So uh, I just acknowledge like I'm, I want to, if I'm going to be drained and have less energy and do a worse job, I know this can sound kind of shitty, but like I want to give it to work. I want to give it to my, my art job that I'm doing for money and that I kind of have to do and that I have like factors forcing me to do it and to finish it. Um, I want to give that the lesser energy and I want to give the energy for my own stuff. The num I want to give my own stuff, I want to give the A1 energy. So I would do it first thing in the morning when I was bright and hadn't built up a filmy patina of disappointments throughout the day yet. That helped rather than trying to sneak it in at the end of the day. John O'Q says, hi, Steve, it's me again. How long have you been streaming? One hour, a little bit more. Sketchbook Steven is some of my favorite, Steve. Thank you, MF. Ever work with tone paper? Yes. I've spent quite a bit of time with tone paper. Some of my biggest... Uh, <coughs> Sorry. You're all right. Uh, some of the times that I remember sort of making the uh, most improvement in my practice, uh, I remember they were occurring on tone paper. Not saying they had to be happening on tone paper. It wasn't like tone paper specific knowledge. I just, it happens to be that in my memory, there are these specific periods where I felt like a lot of stuff was clicking into place and it happened. I happened to be doing a lot of those drawings on tone paper.
Ever wanted to do a small stop motion animation from simple and fast drawing you could do? Um, no, I've, ne I've never been much of an animator. It's never quite leapt up and grabbed my attention. I do like doing like animatics, sort of storyboards that have a, uh, that tell a story, but there's no like real, not like real animation. I've done a lot of animatics though for, um, or essentially done animatics for like work and stuff like that. Sorry that I'm completely covering my sketchbook right now. Sometimes you just gotta get your head right in there for the details though. John O'Q says, how does your drawings look like you use reference even though you're not? Please tell your secret. I will give you all my good luck. I mean, just honestly speaking, it would be completely impossible for me to give away the secret. I mean, there's just nothing you can say about how you would do that. I mean, you get the course, dude. You get the course. It's not a secret, but it's also not something that could just be said in a straightforward way. It's hours and hours and hours and hours of lecture <laughs> to answer that question and then a lot of applied effort to actually embody the skill of making something done from imagination look like it wasn't, make it look real. It's been a lifetime's pursuit, you know? It was always something I wanted to be able to do. And uh, don't know what to say, it ain't easy. <laughs> it is not easy. It gets better and better every single time. That's right. That's right. I literally got a heart attack. Well, you know, it's extremely loud and attention grabbing <laughs> and sudden. So that makes a lot of sense. Everything's adding up here.
<laughs> you've done work for Nickelodeon. Do they want to give kids nightmares? Sometimes. I do all sorts of styles when I do client work. When I do stuff on streams and online, I really try to keep it to like my personal look, but um, I've really only been an illustrator um, in my public online capacity. Um, most of my professional work has been design. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm drawing very, you know, sort of industry lines here, but yeah, most of my work, my commercial work is design work. And when you're a commercial designer, you got to be a chameleon, you know, and I'm, I'm actually quite good at that. I'm very good at uh, disguising my style and matching styles and analyzing styles and blending things together and fitting to, fitting to established IPs and styles and things like that, so... I'm not saying I'm the best at doing cuter cartoony work, but I've had to do a lot of it for work. Steven, have you ever drawn your family members? What was the experience, their reactions? Yeah, not, I mean, no big reaction. They knew I was an artist and that I was serious about improving my skills, so they were always happy to sit for me. And they were always appropriately charmed by a drawing of them. And every, doubt, every now and then, I'd even do a good one. I, I, I think it really became commonplace after a while. You know, they, um, they got used to, um, you know, I'd be sitting next to them. I'd be sitting with them in the living room watching TV and... I'd have my sketchbook and they knew I'd often be drawing them, drawing the room or capturing their profile or something like that. And I did also uh, do like formal sittings with them. But um, yeah, I think it just got really commonplace after a while. They just, I think the sketchbooking really just sort of made it less of an event. You know, they knew it was likely they were sort of constantly getting drawn. Goodbye, Mr. Gan Wong. Have you ever warred have you ever warred on some spooky, grotesque designs in the industry, like those you post online? Um, not, no, no, I wouldn't. Yeah, I haven't really done much spooky stuff for work. I'm trying to remember. 
I've done creatures and stuff like that, but I definitely wouldn't put put it in like the um, spooky category. I'd, I'd say more just in the typical like fantasy category. Nothing really scary or anything like that. Or even not much, see, I don't think of the stuff that I draw as spooky. You know, I acknowledge that it's weird, but I personally don't think of it as spooky. And yeah, I did, haven't even really done much weird stuff for work. There's only so much weird stuff out there. You know, it's still a niche. Really more of like a gun for hire kind of an artist in my commercial work. Hello, Great White Sufi, who says, it is Eid here, so just here to say hello. Happy Eid. Take care. And my hair is getting big enough that it starts blocking the drawing like as soon as I <laughs> lean forward any little bit. Tommy Han says, I had psychology class, dear Steven, but I'm back now. Did you miss me? Did I miss you? Weren't you just in a psychology class? Shouldn't you know that that would mean that we were in a parasocial relationship? Quit being so parasocial. Asking me if I miss you. Come on, man. Snap back to reality. Whoa, there goes Rabbit. Carl Frank says, cool creature. This could be a take on Frankenstein's monster or something like that. Thank you, Carl.
Carl Frank says, we have never skydived together. How could we be parasocial? Very funny. Oh, very funny. Hey, Stephen, did you ever have trouble with linear perspective and its paradoxes? Yeah, I mean, who doesn't? I mean, it's, you got to learn it. I mean, I don't think perspective comes intuitively to anybody except the person who discovered it, probably. <laughs> uh, I don't, I don't, I think literally everybody has problems with it. It's just not, it's not an intuitive thing. It's all math. You got to do all sorts of strange rituals to plot it right and things like that. Stephen, what is form? Hmm. A vast question. Vast enough that I have a video on this channel called The Mystery of Form that is a meditation on that very question. If you want to hear my long answer to that question, or at least my, my musings on it, go look up that video. Just type into YouTube, Stephen Zapata, The Mystery of Form. It'll pop right up. What is that blending smudging tool you're using? Never seen that. It's just a, a blending stump. I think their official name, actually, I was going to say, I think they're also called tortillions, uh, a French word, I think. But um, I actually think these kinds are not technically called tortillions. They pro they're the same thing, though. They're just, they're a common art supply. You can find them at any art store. They're cheap. They're just uh, compressed paper in a stick. You can get the same effect by using your finger. You can even, um, you can just use a paper towel. You know, this is just paper, just paper crushed into a vaguely pencil-like form so that it's a little easier to hold. A paper towel will do the same thing. It's just that um, it's not quite as accurate. You can't quite see what you're doing as much.
Stephen Gobert says, what is form? Baby, don't hurt me. Don't hurt me no more. Don't hurt me no more. I want to no, 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 no. I want to know. I want to know. It's just the rhythm of the night. Oh, yeah. Uh huh. And just the rhythm of the night. Oh, yeah. Uh uh. Blood, just that rhythm of the night. Uh oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh oh. -uh. It's just the rhythm of the night. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. Yeah, yeah. Chica, chica, chica. I'm going to sharpen a pencil. Calm down. Calm down. Song name, please. That's an 80s song I haven't heard in a long time. That is, It's Just the Rhythm of the Night. Oh, yeah, uh-huh. That's the full name of the song. And it's by Ricky Martin. Hey, Stephen, what's your go-to reference searcher? It depends what kind of reference I'm looking for. Different sources are better for different things. I think videos are underutilized as reference. Videos of stuff make a really good reference because uh, you get different angles and you can sort of understand confusing forms better by watching things move in space. Yeah. Is that a Reebok or a Nike? Oh, yeah. I've seen that video too. That's a classic. Where the guy's calling in requesting Rhythm of the Night. But he thinks it's, is that a Reebok or a Nike? <laughs> <laughs> and the DJ knows it. The DJ actually works it out. I wonder if that's fake. I wonder if that was staged. I, I think it'd be really hard to make up. Like, how would your, what would make your mind go there to make that up? My gut tells me it's real. It's one of those things that's just too stupid to not be real. Rhythm of the Night by Corona. It's not Ricky Martin, Steve. It is. You're wrong. Do a little bit more research before you say ignorant stuff like that. It is definitely Ricky Martin. That's what Ricky Martin sounds like. Is that the rhythm of the night? Oh, yeah. That's exactly what Ricky Martin sounds like. That's what all his songs sound like. If it's not true, I don't. I gotta say, it's pretty funny. If it's not real, I don't want to know. I don't want to know.
I want to believe. It's true, it's Ricky Martin, the same singer of Alleluia. That's right. It's a cold and it's a broken Ricky Martin. Ricky Martin. Ricky Martin. Ricky Martin. Ricky Martin. She sat you down, she rickied your Martin. She rickied your Martin and then she rickied more. But you didn't know it was Ricky Martin, did ya? It goes like this the Ricky, the Martin, the Major Rick, the Minor Martin. It's a cold and it's a broken Ricky Martin. Ricky Martin. Ricky Martin. Ricky Martin. Ricky Martin. Ziggy Stardust by Ricky Martin. Look, if, it, if you don't know that it's a cold and it's a broken Ricky Martin, I don't know what you think you know. I don't know what you think you know in this world. If you don't know that it's a cold and it's a broken Ricky Martin. I once called in a request to a station and they told me off air to say I wanted something to listen to while mowing my lawn and I did it to get on the air. What the? I find that strangely disturbing. Like what agenda is a radio station trying to push where they need, they need requests to be coming in from people who are mowing their lawns? That's like a weird agenda to have. The hell is that? My favorite Ricky Martin song is obviously El Hombre Diamante Rojo. That's a great one. <laughs> Curse Fetus says, doing horribly. What's up, Steve? Beautiful voice. I'm sorry to hear you're doing horribly, Curse Fetus. Hang in there. Tomorrow I'm having an eight-hour drawing workshop, also says Curse Fetus. Wish me luck, dude. I'm wishing you good luck. I'm sending you powerful good luck cosmic rays. I hope your workshop is fantastic. Eight hours, that's a long time. You're going the distance. You're going all the way. I 
I think they wanted something ridiculous. Yeah, is the implication that like, is is what makes it ridiculous the implication that um, like what could you hear while you're mowing the lawn? Because it's a very loud thing. That's some 4D chess they're playing. I'm having a low-key panic attack about that right now. Now I'm starting to question if every everything I've ever heard called into a radio station is completely faked. And it's all to push some radio station agenda. I'm getting pissed now. Welcome to the jungle by Ricky Martin. <laughs> Welcome to the jungle! I am Rick and Martin! I'm not gonna go, I'll destroy my voice. If we, if we cross into that territory, I'm gonna destroy my voice. <laughs> We're gonna break you down! Yeah! <laughs> Completely blew out my microphone. I'm sorry that I just ruined everybody's speakers. I know, of course. Who would like that? Of course, even animals are upset by this. <laughs> even animals are upset by this. No, I'm sorry, fan. We are the people who can find whatever you may need. If you got that money, honey, we got your disease. Jungle, welcome to the jungle where the fell. Yeah. Yep. Okay. We're all right. We're doing okay. I have it just, just take it easy. We're doing all right. We're doing all right. <laughs> F for people sleeping. Rest in peace, people trying to sleep to this stream. People, a lot of people do try to sleep to this stream. <laughs> they do. That's why I, I, re I recently found myself resisting. Um, just spending two hours doing ACDC. Mm. So I just, I know I'm waking people up. Oh man. <laughs> the multiverse where Ricky Martin sings Welcome to the Jungle is the worst one. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, that's some stupid shit. Danny's trying to get walked. I don't know. I can't do it. I'll do it soon. She's got to hold on. <laughs> I love your tones. So smooth. Must be talking about the dulcet tones of my award-winning voice. No way they're talking about my values and my drawings. And him did Ricky Martin soothe with dulcet tones from both recorder and liar. Music to tame the savage breast. Welcome to the jungle, baby. I'm so, I'm sorry. Fanny always thinks that high pitched voice is uh, me talking to her. You're not going out. Go to bed. Go to bed. Is her bed in here?
You doing okay out there? Grab her bed on your way in. It's a cold and it's a broken Ricky Martin. Everybody knows that. Zit Nux says, good evening, Stephen. Good evening, Zift. I love the part when he says, it's Martin time. And then he lives La Vida Loca on everyone. That's my favorite part too. I was fucking standing up in the theater at that moment, dude. It's Martin time and then Buckethead's guitar solo from the Power Rangers theme. Now Buckethead, Buckethead did the guitar solo on the X-Men theme, right? I forget. Did he do both? It's one or the other. Do you think every drawing is a design problem? Mm, to some extent. I mean, I think speaking practically, there's definitely kinds of drawings you can do that it's really a reach to say it's a design problem. Like if you're doing a drawing from reference or a drawing from life and your explicit goal, almost on a philosophical level, is just to present the reference as honestly as possible, then we could still have a sort of philosophical debate if that's even possible and that you're theoretically designing in sort of like what you're even noticing about the reference. But uh, I think that's stretching it. I think at that point we could comfortably say those kinds of drawings are not design problems, but most drawings that are not that, yeah, basically there's, there's design involved in all of them, you know? Even if you're not designing content, you are making design decisions about how you're going to compose, how you're going to arrange values, what hierarchies of focus you're going to produce. Those are all design issues. Lost my flex eraser, my heart is broken and my soul is lost. Jesus. Just buy another one and you'll find your soul. That's a pretty easy situation to reclaim your soul from. You should count yourself lucky. Lost your eraser? Welcome to the jungle, baby. You think every drawing is a problem? I don't. If you're in the right headspace, even the most difficult drawings are a pleasure. And even if you're and even if you're doing the most straightforward, simple drawing, if you're in the wrong headspace, it'll be a pain in the ass. I don't want peace, I want problems. Well, you're in the right place. You'll get whatever you ask for in art. You need only ask. You want problems? It's got it. Existential angst? Oh, yeah. Self-doubt? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. You want peace? Oh, yeah. That's there. That one's secret, though. Don't tell anyone. 
You don't receive super chats anymore? I should. I don't think I have them off or anything. Yeah, should be able to get them. Right away. There's Johnny Pearson with $5. Thank you so much. I noticed form turns can be pretty soft for a sculpt and the end result can potentially still be crisp and clean. Ever seen this in drawings? Well, even if it's all soft transitions of form, um, if the shapes are clean, it'll still feel crisp and clean. You know, soft doesn't mean a form transition being soft doesn't guarantee that it's ambiguous or shapeless or sort of directionless or without intention, right? You can do shapes that have really strong geometric character and that have a lot of intent behind them, right? Like they can be really fast shapes. They can feel like they accelerate a lot. They can feel, one can feel more triangular than another, more rectilinear than another, more prismatic than another. But all of the transitions between the values can be soft. They're, they're not mutually exclusive. And I think that if you want um, a really strong form, you do need to make sure that uh, you do get some geometric underpinning into your transitions and into your forms or else you're just gonna kind of make everything look like a big bag of walnuts, which is not what we want. Thank you for the $5, Johnny. You're very kind. Thank you, thank you, thank you. May Ricky Martin always be with you if you want him there. It's a cold and it's a broken Ricky Martin. Ricky Martin again. I can't wait to be Ricky Martin again. The thing I love is being Ricky Martin with my friends. And I can't wait to be Ricky Martin again. Ricky Martin again. Like a band of Rickies, we go down the highway. We're the best of Ricks. I mean, there's really only so far this can go. I mean, there's no way we can just keep doing this, right? We've got to stop. I mean, we're just way too out there. I was a Martin man. Across the coach road, I did ride. With Ricky Martin by my side. Wait somewhere. Hi, Stephen, would you consider yourself a good singer? The f 
<laughs> the fuck kind of question is that? <laughs> what do you think? I can't hear myself? What am I hard of hearing? I mean, what would you, what would you think if every time you open your mouth to sing, molten gold poured out? What would you think? Of course I know I'm a good singer. World class. I don't know how many times I have to say it. I have the genetics of a nine-year-old girl singing Ave Maria at a funeral. That's what I am down at my core. That is what I am. Everything else is built on top of that. If Steven spent as much time singing as drawing, he'd be bigger than Beyonce, Madonna, and Ricky Martin combined. You know, I made my choices in life. It's just, it was clear to me that, it was clear to me that being bigger than Beyonce would be too easy. That was clear to me early on. And I, I always knew that I wanted to live a life I was proud of, where I did really difficult things and got good at things that I wasn't naturally good at, so. I decided pretty early on that uh, there wouldn't really be a lot of pride associated with being bigger than Beyonce, so I just never made it my focus. Are we still in the warming up stage of the stream because I'm done sketchbooking? I don't know. Look, whatever stage I'm at doesn't have to be the stage you're at, that's for sure. I don't know, I got really sucked into this drawing, so I'm not sure that I'll go to one of the other ones, but. Fanny. I don't know what she's bothering me for. 
It's not like she went out super early or anything. Come on, I know you can hold it. Go, go to bed. Go to bed. She's not even going to want to be out there when she gets out there. This dog hates walking. No. Dude, she just keeps bopping back and forth between the two of us. Beat it. You think she can hold it? I'm... Of course she can hold it. She never fails. Oh, now she's barking at me. Now she's getting pissed. I got to mute before she barks at me. I'll be right back. I got to get my dog to... Dude, all right, this is getting ridiculous. Don't you dare bark at me. I am live on the internet. She making me very uncomfortable. She's just staring at me. I can see her eyes staring at me through the, the crook of my elbow. She's like right there, eyes right, looking right over the, my, the arm rest of my chair. Oh, thank God. Did she lay down? Yeah, she laid down. That dog is playing mind games? Yeah. She's a bullshitter, don't you deny it. You ain't gotta believe. You ain't gotta believe a word she says. 
She ain't got to go. I'd take her out there. She wouldn't pee for like two blocks. It's all about power with her. It's just proving that she can. Bless you. My poor wife is sick. Get her some ginger tea, lemon tea. Can't you see I'm live on the internet here? I ain't got, to, I ain't got time to help my wife. I can't, be, I can't be getting her anything right now. I'm trying to be the world's most culturally significant artist right now. What's inside the egg? The egg. The egg. Ooh. The egg. The peck egg. Woe to they who seek the egg. Renola Dominguez says, very cool drawing. Do you have or think about the end product or is it completely done intuitively? Uh, this one was all intuitive. This is just pure sketchbook randomness. I was just looking for something to pique my interest enough to warm up with. What tool are you using to blend the pencil strokes? I forgot what it's called. Uh, blending stump. Just a little stick of compressed paper. You can use a paper towel or even your finger will do fine. It 
it doesn't get you better results or anything really. I, I use them because the, the tip's a little tighter so I can be a little bit more precise with it and it keeps my hands clean. Which is very important. I mean, I didn't get into art to get my hands dirty. Come on. This is an elevated elitist pursuit. It's a $50 Copic blending stump. This is official licensed Steven Zapata merchandise. This is an official Steven Zapata blending stump. Low, low price of $79.99 or four payments of $299.99. They're the superior brand of blending stumps. The cheap ones at the art store are inferior. Mine are hand rolled by first generation Cuban artisans. People don't understand that. You need to get the exact right tightness to the stump or else it doesn't unlock the Secrets of shading, which I have also patented. This is all obviously true because no one can quite make drawings that look like mine, and it's obviously all about this tool that I've developed for myself. And that out of the generosity of my heart, I make available to others. The Carnage Chaos says, hey, nice to catch you on stream, so it's drawing time. That's right. Got any daily art rituals? Yeah, I mean, you know. Look at myself in the mirror and go, yes. all right, just another day of this, man. All right, come on. It's all right. We're going to get through it. Just one more drawing, buddy. It'll all be over soon. That usually gets me in the right headspace. Andre says, I've got some from Artist Loft and they're quite good even though I'm not fond of all their art supplies. You got to throw those out. I bet those aren't acid free. I mean, your drawings are going to come apart in a couple years. You got to get patented Steven Zapata brand blending stumps. Ours are acid free, non-GMO, fair trade certified. 
I mean, they're the only ones that keep your paper safe, moisturized, hydrated, permanently archived in the U.S. National Car Archives. You got to throw out those artist loft ones and you got to get the real deal. Sam Lamb, my dear Sam Lamb. Sam Lamb says, Stephen, how does it feel to be so good looking and skilled? Feels good, Sam. It feels good. I'm going to be honest. It feels real good. How does it feel to be so thoughtful and observant? Hold on, I'm gonna move my microphone. <laughs> Packed with Omega Z. That's funny. Sam Lamb says, Yeah, I'm not skilled, but I have a great butt, so it makes up for that, and I love it. Sam's got it going on. I can says Sam Lamb dropped the workout routine. Sam's workout routine is pretty serious. I think it goes, it would go beyond the YouTube text limit. Steven sings to every stump and gives it a little kiss before delivering, you know. Into each one I whisper, it's a cold and it's a broken Ricky Martin. Just hatching with the eraser over this whole area because it got a little high contrast. So this will just knock the contrast 
back a bit, blend, blend everything together. But since it's directional, it'll also kind of like give some hatching energy to it. I don't know if it really helps me. I don't know if it really helps the illusion of form, but uh, it does sort of just like swirl in the direction that the form is turning from left to right. That's kind of nice. Always be drawing, even when you're making corrections, if you can. Trash Arm says, Steven, I'm just hopping in the stream to tell you I found a homeless guy here in Kenitra who looks exactly like you. I'm not joking. I was almost going to ask him on how to make one plane shapes look real. There's a lot of people who look like me out there. Big brow, dark fuzzy hair. There's a lot of us out there. Dan says, Stephen, what do you have to say about learning composition? Do you think it can be learned, taught, or are you of the mind that it's intuitive and all the ideas we put on it are not real? Uh, it can definitely be learned. I mean, I, I think that means more, um, you get better at it the more that you do it, for sure. But I do think composition is, it's not that it's intuitive, it's just that it's, it's picture specific. You get what I'm saying? Like composition is just how you arrange the picture. So um, the kinds of compositional successes and failures that um, are successes and failures within the context of one kind of picture uh, could be flipped on their head for a very different kind of picture. What was a success for one picture will be a failure for another and what was a failure for one picture will be a success for another. Composition is not like immutable rules or laws that just work across all pictures. It's just how you arrange any given picture. So I do think you get, you do get a better understanding of that as you do it more and more. And you do sort of get, you get deeper knowledge about like what certain values mean, what certain shapes mean, what sort of uh, hierarchies of value or shape or contrast do, you know, the function that they serve. But um, it's always subjective and picture specific. Miles Bloomfield says, I'm teaching art this summer to 11 to 15 year olds. What are your tips on teaching art? Uh, priority number one is do not inflict your taste on the students. That's the number one mistake teachers make. There's more bad stories about art teachers out there than there are good stories. Unfortunately, uh, your number one priority should be to not give a child a complex that will take them 15 years to parse through because uh, art teachers do that all the time. So shut up. Don't inflict your taste on them. Encourage the students. 
and use your creativity to try to help them find what works for them and the art that they want to make. Don't use your creativity to try to convince them that they need to do it the way that you do it or that you're smarter than them or something like that. Because uh, once you go down those roads, you're just going to you're going to say one stupid thing that's going to get stuck in their brain for literally over a decade or something like that. And will keep them from being creative. Like there's so many artists that have something like that. So don't be a thoughtless jerk. Put the students first. And um, yeah, be just don't inflict your taste on them. Matej K says, what is the recommended protocol if you want to share art online these days? Uh, I would look for small communities if I were you. I would think the large, I think the large communities are sort of washed out and done. Like posting on Instagram, ArtStation, all that kind of stuff. Um, I mean, you're gonna, you, you can of course still post there, but I just think at this point, it's not gonna do much for most people to post in those places. Um, you should do it probably, you know, post on, you know, whatever social media sites or whatever has sort of caught your attention. But um, I wouldn't make it your priority. I wouldn't spend too much of your energy thinking about that if you're early on. You know, if you're like, if you're a high intermediate to pro level and it's really about marketing, that's different. Then you do need to focus on that and you want to put effort into sort of pushing it out there, but for growth and stuff like that, and you're trying to share your journey, the big platforms are not, they're just not very useful anymore. I would look for small communities. Establish a group of friends that work together as best you can. Hang out on Discord with them or WhatsApp or whatever and just be sharing work all the time with them and give each other feedback and just Look for the smallest community you can get into that is engaged. Sam Lamb says, I have a for real life art question. I'm finally working on my first illustration that is something more of a story-based scene along the lines of a comic panel than my prior character focus work. I'm unsurprisingly struggling with drawing something other than a front-on epic hero pose and wondering if you have resources and tips on how to approach... Wait, hold on, I gotta... Where's the... On how to approach it, I take it. And then I'm going to the next message. Here we go. You recall I brought 3D into my workflow, but that doesn't work here because of the very fact that exploring poses is itself part of the ideation process. For Hermes, I knew what pose I wanted. Um, yeah, I guess I would need a, a little bit more specifics, but uh, I, it's all about the story, right? So you say it's a story-based scene along the lines of a comic panel. And then you're struggling drawing something other than a front-on epic hero pose. It's, if, the, if the story is pushing you to draw a what you're feeling is like a generic hero pose, then you might need to tweak your understanding of the story. You know, you might need to look for a little bit more nuance there or be able to sort of put it to yourself or write it down in a way where it makes that inappropriate, where it gives you a more specific idea for, yeah, a more nuanced pose, a bit of, um, you know, a lot of the times in illustration, especially in animation, we think of it as the acting. You know, there's, there's, a, there's an aspect where 
if you're doing illustrations and especially animation and you're doing a lot of characters, you do also need to be an actor deep down, right? You're, it doesn't, the fact that you're drawing this scene doesn't change the fact that the principles of acting and performance need to sort of be um, embodied within the picture, right? So an animator who is not working from, let's say, good reference, a good video reference of an actor doing the poses needs to embody it themselves. They need to, even if them as a person is not a great actor, um, they need to, in a sense, have a secret actor within who is an excellent actor, and that is what is coming out in the drawings. Um, and you know, it's not doesn't have to be that mystical. A lot of animators will act out the scene for themselves in reality and record it and use it as a reference. But um, maybe explore those parts of it, and you know, get in front of the mirror and sort of like embody what needs to happen in the scene and see what you come up with. Just sort of let it let it flow naturally. Uh, I did that all the time when I was doing keyframes uh, back at at work back in the day. Very very common. Yeah, sorry, more specifics here. I plan to draw one character who is deeply in grief, maybe slumped over and crying, and his friend there to comfort him. Yeah, see, that's specific. Maybe if you, I mean, with things like that, that's really personal stuff. So uh, I think you'd probably find some good little seeds for ways that you could construct the pose if you sort of give yourself some time to actually like act it out, perform it. And um, if you have a friend who you're, intimate enough with who would be willing to act it out with you. Um, you don't need to record it or anything. You can even, you can just ask them to sort of experiment with you and sort of do it like in an actor's workshop kind of a way. And even if you don't record it, you would be amazed how much getting into the poses will inform your knowledge of what would be appropriate in the illustration. And you'll, for my money, you'll draw the poses better if you've, if you've sort of felt the tensions, you've felt the racking in your body or the way that you would move your arms or shoulders in reaction to something like sobbing or emotional heaving or something like that. Um, all that stuff is really, really useful. Yeah, give it a shot. Try it out, Sam. I used to do that all the time back in school because a lot of our assignments were working from very specific stories. I had a, uh, basically a full body mirror in my bedroom and I would constantly be getting up while I was drawing and um, taking the poses or even before I started sketching, sort of like seeing it's like sometimes the, the acting was the first sketch because I, I didn't, you don't even know like, you don't even know where to begin sometimes with the drawing. You just need to sort of see what is the reaction to a moment like this and just see it in the mirror and just be like, all right, okay, that's, that's sort of naturally how you would do it, what you would do. All right, I think I need a break from this one. Let's work on the, uh, let's work on the horse a little bit. I hope my dog is not shitting in this house. Interesting. Let's just work on the horse for a bit. I don't have any mirrors in my room, so I end up using a phone most of the time. Yeah, phone, mirror, whatever.
light in here. Now it's too bright. That yeah, looks about right. Fran says, I have a question. You often speak about acting, and I see some actor traits in you. I've been acting for more than a decade now. I'm interested in how I can use my knowledge and where to find out more. Um, if you really like acting, I think animation is probably the most direct um, application. I mean, you, you don't hear it a lot on the surface level, but amongst professional animators, high-level animators. I mean, there is an understanding that, uh, I, I don't know how else to put it, it's like, they are actors. It's very, very real. It's, it's, like, a, it's like an industry deep cut, because, um, you know, for people who aren't animators, they can kind of be like, the fuck are you guys talking about? Like, it sounds like there's, it would make it sound like an actor is sort of um, puffing themselves up or something like that, but if you've seen the work that they actually do and what some of the greats are capable of, it's just pretty clear that animators are actually actors or else they couldn't possibly do what they do, you know? In terms of getting out more nuanced results within characters and how to think about their emotions, should I act like them? Yeah. You sure should. Almost used the dirty red side of the stump and put a red smudge into my black and white drawing. That was a close one. Too many horse drawings going on right now. Got some sort of horse that my mind is trying to put out in the world.
going to break all the nice, neat hatching I did. It's never worth it to save it. As soon as you feel resistance on changing anything, that's usually a sign that you should just shut up and do it. If I was Steven, I would pet the dog. Oh my God. That reminds me, my wife hasn't walked her yet. We're really pushing it here. She was pissed earlier. I hope she didn't go inside. I hope she didn't leave me a big stinky poop right on my pillow. Spiteful cat behavior from my dog. She's never done that for the record. In fact, my dog is very considerate when she has an accident. Here's how considerate. You guys aren't going to believe me when I tell you. This is how considerate my dog is. Once in the middle of the night, she had an accident, and she was so considerate that she jumped into the bathtub to have her accident, and she shit in there. I was so proud of her. When I found that, I, I told her, I was like, good girl. I showed her, I was like, good. That's a good girl. It was amazing. If I was Steven, I would pet the dog. If I was Steven, I would sing. Singing is good for the soul. I would sing right now if I didn't know that it would, it would draw my dog's baleful eye to me and I would be expected to walk her. I need to fly under the radar because she always comes over to my desk when I sing. Whenever I rip yet another Grammy winning track. Bye, Renola. Oh shit, you know what? Um, I just realized I gotta walk the dog because my wife is fucking sick. I forgot I'm up my own ass because I'm streaming. So I'm actually gonna go. Sorry guys, that just hit me. Putting all the pieces together. Steven, did you get the word bail from, baleful from Paradise Lost? I did. Um, I think I got baleful from Lord of the Rings, actually. Because I've known it, I, I've loved that word since uh, I was young. I didn't read Paradise Lost until later. Uh... I think it's from a description of Sauron's eye, Sauron's baleful eye or something like that.
Steven, any tips for learning to draw from imagination? I know mileage is important, but I was wondering if references should be studied in a certain way to help the process. On that note, I do have a thing, which is when you do study references, if you know you want to be an imaginative artist, don't do stuff in the studies that you can only do when working from reference. Okay, that's a complicated way to put it. What do I mean? For example, when I did studies, I almost never used grids because when working from imagination, there's nothing to grid. I don't have anything to put plumb lines on and to, and to do ratios with. So I spent as much as possible. I did use grids early on just to sort of establish my intuitions for angles, you know, once I realized that was important. But besides that, um, I always tried to copy my references in the way that I would draw from imagination. So I wouldn't use uh, grids. I wouldn't use relative measurements by like holding my pencil up to the reference. I did my best to eyeball it, which is, does that make things go slower? Yeah, but that way you're not rehearsing stuff that you're not gonna get to do when working from imagination. And I also tried to draw the way I wanted to draw when drawing the reference. It's really easy when you have a reference in front of you and you're not specifically like your creative work isn't reference drawing, right? It's really easy to choke up and draw in a very different way than you naturally sketch. And I think that that is something that you need to consciously deprogram and get out of. So when you draw from reference, you tend to be like very precise, you choke up, you do a lot of like uh, angle lines because that's a natural way to sort of capture things that you're seeing in the reference. And again, up to a point that's important because there is information in the angles about anatomy and things like that. But um, try to spend a significant amount of your time, I would argue most of your time, being aware of that, pulling away from it and drawing with drawing your references with the sort of chaotic searching energy that you tend to have when you sketch so that you marry those things more intimately and you're you're making you're trying to make drawing from reference as similar as possible to drawing from imagination so that what you learn there can be a little bit more one to one um it's not going to be for everybody you know if if you find that process unnatural or anything like that i would never say to like force it if it feels unnatural, but I, I did that a lot and I was very aware throughout my practices of not getting dependent on stuff that was totally unworkable when working from imagination when I was practicing from reference. Um, I'd, I'd advise trying that out. I think there's a lot, there's a lot of useful stuff there. All right, everybody. I'm going to run before my dog has an accident in here. Thank you, everybody, for being here. Are you going to stream next week? Yes. Yes. Uh, hopefully I don't get sick. The thing, my wife just got sick today, and we always get what the other one has, so it's basically inevitable that I will get sick in the next few days, but um, maybe that clips off Monday or nothing, but um, hopefully it's earlier in the week if I even get it. So, But, yeah, I plan on streaming next week. No, normal soft schedule is in my, oh shit, wait a minute. I know, I have a physical calendar. What kind of a dinosaur am I? Uh, actually, I think that stuff probably won't happen. Yeah, I, I think it's just a normal schedule next week. For now, that was I have some stuff that was supposed to happen in the mid, at the beginning of next week, but I don't think it's going to materialize. That's what my gut tells me. So um, yeah, normal soft schedule for next week. Mon that's Monday, Wednesday, Thursday is when I'll try to stream. All right, everybody, take care. Thanks for hanging out with me while we drew today. We did a little bit of work on that, but most of the stream was on. We drew this guy. We drew that guy on stream. That was most of the stream.
You know, when you throw contrast down, I mean, that guy looks more done than, even though I have so much more time on this, but this is a much more elaborate piece, but I gotta kinda get some of the punch that I got there from just sort of being freewheeling. I gotta get that in there too. But there's also something to be said about just taking your time and going a little bit slower. Damn, I love drawing. Drawing is the best. Horses, I'm on a horse kick. I'm trying to work out some sort of a horse thing, you know? Bye, everyone. Have a great weekend. Peace. Like Ricky Martin said, adios.